This presentation reviews the utility of physical distancing regarding COVID-19 transmission and is intended for use by school and child care settings. There are three objectives for this presentation. One, to review physical distancing and its role in reducing the transmission of COVID-19. Two, to review strategies to maintain physical distancing both indoors and outdoors in school and childcare settings. And three, to provide approaches to take when physical distancing is not possible. Physical distancing is a key preventative measure for COVID-19. Physical distancing is not all or none, and the greater the distance, the lower the risk. The term physical distancing means that staff, essential visitors, and students or children are to stay at least two meters or six feet away from one another whenever possible. This is particularly important when staff may remove their masks during lunch or break. When a person is infected with COVID-19, being within two meters of the infected person increases the risk of exposure to their infectious droplets. Staying at least two meters away from others is one measure that helps reduce the risk of potential exposure to COVID-19. It is important to remember that the risk of transmission is higher indoors, particularly when physical distancing is not practiced and or when masking is not practiced consistently by all. This slide provides a few examples of what you can do to reinforce physical distancing with students or children. Talk to students or children about physical distancing and why it is important in a non-judgmental manner. Visual cues, for example, markings on the floor to show distance between people can be helpful. Plan activities that promote physical distancing and model appropriate behavior by demonstrating consistent physical distancing from other staff members. It is important to note that strict physical distancing may not always be possible, especially for younger children, and masking is an important supplemental strategy that will reduce the risk with close interactions. What can you do to support physical distancing in classrooms within a cohort? Avoid having children move desks closer together or change the orientation of desks. These configurations should aim to allow distance between children and or maintain cohorts. While it is important to maintain physical distancing at all times between cohorts, it is recognized that it is not always feasible within a cohort. Therefore, it is important to remember physical distancing along with other prevention measures such as hand hygiene and proper mask use must be used together to reduce the risk of COVID-19. What can you do to support physical distancing when moving between spaces? Stagger periods of movement and promote one-way flow of traffic. Maintain physical distance at all times between cohorts. What can you do to support physical distancing during exercise or use of the gym? It is important that there be careful consideration around exercise in gym class because physical activity can be associated with increased droplet and aerosol formation. With this in mind, outdoor activities should be encouraged and moderate to vigorous physical activities should be avoided indoors unless they can occur in large, well-ventilated areas where physical distancing can be maintained. When moderate to vigorous physical activity takes place, at least two meters should be maintained between individuals. Attention should be given to the processes and behaviors associated with exercising or gym class itself with consideration of how to reduce person-to-person -person contact and spread of droplets. For example, signage should be posted informing students of the maximum occupancy to facilitate physical distancing during the use of locker rooms and showers and students should avoid direct and close physical contact such as high fives, handshakes, fist bumps, and hugs. What can you do to support physical distancing during outdoor activities? The risk of transmission is reduced outdoors, but health and safety measures should continue to be encouraged. 
Consider activities such as nature or scavenger hunts, hide and seek, tag, and obstacle courses that can occur outside. Reinforce mandatory masking outdoors when physical distancing cannot be maintained. On the playground, important protective measures to prevent the transmission of COVID-19 include limiting the capacity and avoiding crowded playgrounds, wearing a mask when physical distancing isn't possible, and cleaning your hands before and after the use of playground equipment with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This slide highlights a few points related to lunch and nutritional breaks. Clear instructions should be provided to students and staff on how to safely take off and store masks at lunch or other nutritional breaks, as well as putting masks back on afterwards. Non-medical face masks that need to be removed but are intended to be reused should be stored in a clean paper bag, envelope, or something similar that does not retain moisture. Hand hygiene is to be performed before and after touching their mask and eating or drinking. Students, children, and staff should supply their own food and drink or drink bottle, and these items should be labeled and not shared. Individually portioned foods, including ready to eat foods, such as whole apples, cut carrots, cucumbers, and cheese, and foods from bulk or larger items such as crackers can be safely portioned out as individual servings in an inspected kitchen and following appropriate food safety practices. If self-serve food items are available, utensils should be provided to minimize direct hand contact with food. Avoid the use of shared serving utensils. Consider providing single individual plated food. If you would like more information, please see the list of resources here. Public Health Ontario would appreciate your thoughts on these refresher presentations. Please visit PHO's School Resources webpage to access and complete a short survey. If you have any questions, please email communications at oahpp.ca. Thank you.